In the last video, we saw how we can gather information from two different tables by making use of joins. And so we saw how to do that with raw SQL, and now we're going to see how we can perform joins using SQL Alchemy. And if you go to your post router, we're going to go to the get posts path operation. Uh, and so we're going to kind of just take this step by step and see how we can slowly build out this query uh, so that we can actually perform a join. And if you take a look at the current query, uh, what we can do is just ignore all of the filter stuff first. And so really the, the meat of this query is just db.query, and then you pass the model, and that's going to get every single post that we have in this table. And then we perform all of these filters to kind of drill down. So we're going to start off with the same thing, and I'm going to save this new query as results. Or, or we could just say posts underscore votes, maybe, and we'll just save it as results. And so we're going to start off with the same exact query. We're going to do db.query models dot post. And then we're going to perform dot all. Actually, remove the dot all. And the reason I don't want to do the dot all is I don't actually want to query the table. I just want to actually see the raw SQL that it's generating. And now we can do a print results. I'm going to bring this up a bit. And we're going to just send a query to the get all posts. And you can see the raw SQL that it generated. So it's going to select and then it'll basically select every column and then rename it uh, accordingly. And then it's just going to get that from the post table. So it's getting every single post. That's all. So everything is pretty straightforward at this point. And if we go back to our um, PG admin, let's actually take a look. Uh, let's take a look at what our SQL query actually looks like. Uh, and so you can see here, there's a whole bunch of things going on. But the next thing I want to do is I want to actually start to perform the join. So I want to join on the votes table. So let's take a look at how we can do that. And to perform a join with SQL Alchemy, I can just say join. And then we have to specify the table we want to join. So this is going to be the models dot vote. And then the second thing is what is going to be our the uh, what is going to be the column that we perform a join on. So in this case, you could see that we're performing a join on post dot ID and votes dot post underscore ID. And we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to say models dot vote dot post underscore ID equals equals. And then we'll say models dot post dot ID. Whenever they're equal, we're going to join the table. Now, the thing about this join is by default with SQL Alchemy, this is going to be a left inner join. And the word inner is going to be a little bit new for you. Um, and that's because there's two different types of left joins. You've got left inner and you have left outer. And I don't want to spend too much time kind of diving into what's the difference. Just know that if you ignore the keyword, it's going to by default be an outer. So what we want is an outer join. Um, however, SQL Alchemy by default, uses um, inner joins. So to actually set this as an outer join, we have to pass one more thing, which is going to be is outer equals true. So this is going to make this a uh, outer left outer join. So we've got our join at this point. And what I'm going to do now is save this again. And let's take a look at our query. So we'll send something. And now we'll take a look at our query. We can see that, OK, we're going to select everything from our post table. Then we're going to perform a left outer join with votes uh, on the table votes whenever votes.postid equals post.id. So we're almost there. Uh, the next thing that we have to do is we have to group by post.id. And then we have to perform the count on votes.post underscore id. And so if you can take a guess as how to do group by, we can just do dot group underscore by. And then we specify the specific column. So we'll do models.post.id. And then we have to get the count. So we'll go here. And I'm going to say, well, first of all, we have to import a function. So what you're going to do is from SQL Alchemy, import func. And so this is going to give us access to functions like count. I'm going to say func.count. And then we'll say models.vote.post underscore ID. We'll save this. And I'm going to send this and let's take a look at the query once again. And so we've got select posts, all of the post columns. Good, 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 good. Uh, and then we get to count, right? And it's going to perform the count. That's all right. However, we're naming it as count one. I don't like that. 
I want to name this something that I will understand. So maybe something like votes. So we have to figure out a way to rename this column. And if you want to rename this column, you just say dot label and then the name that you want to give that column. So we're going to call this votes. And so let's test this out one last time. And now we can see that the column is called votes. So this is exactly what we want. This is the exact query that we generated in PG admin manually. We're just doing it through SQL Alchemy. And what we're going to do is, well, let's actually perform the query. We'll do dot all. I don't need the print anymore. And we're going to actually return results and let's see what happens. So now if I send a query, it's giving me a whole bunch of errors. And if we scroll to the top of the errors, uh, we can see that these are all pedantic validations. Uh, and so it's saying that, hey, there's no title, there's no content, there's no ID, there's no owner ID, there's no owner. All of these fields seem to be missing. And why exactly is that? Well, let's take a look at the response model. So the validation is happening because we use this response model of schemas.post. And so if we go to schemas and we find our post object, our post class, you can see that it expects an ID, a created at, an owner ID, an owner, uh, and all of that good stuff. And it's saying that none of these have been set. So it looks like there's something wrong with our query. But just to make this a little bit simpler, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the response model. So I'm going to just comment out that. Remove the response model so we're not actually performing any validation. And we're going to see what this looks like now. So when we retrieve the data, I want you to take a look at what this looks like. So this right here is one specific post. And so after our changes, we can see that we've got a property called post. And then within there, we have ID published and so on. And then we've got a property of votes. And I'm actually going to copy this as an example. And I'm just going to create a new file. And I'm just going to say, uh, we'll just call this example.py. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. We'll delete this in a bit. So this is what it looks like. And when we go back to our path operation, I'm going to return posts. And we can actually return the response model just to see what that looks like. And so now if I do a query, I need to save. And if you take a look at the query, this is what it looks like in a working state before we set up the joins. And if I go down to my example, where's my example py file? So this is what Pydantic expects. It expects to get an object with a field of title, content, published ID, and so on. However, after our join, something odd happens. We have a field called post. And that breaks everything because it doesn't expect the ID and the published and the owner to be under this, uh, this essentially this dictionary right here. And that's why it's throwing all of these errors. So how exactly do we fix this? Well, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go to my schemas. And I'm actually going to create a new schema. So we'll call this, um, you can call this whatever you want. Maybe post vote or I'm just going to call this post out. And it's going to be a post base. It's going to expand post base. And what we're going to do is we're just going to try to match this as close as possible. So this is going to represent a post object. And then we're going to have a field called votes, which is going to be an integer. So here I can just say uh, we have something called post and don't forget to capitalize it because our query for some reason uh, returns it with a capital P. It took me a little while to figure that out. I was running into a few issues. But we can go here and we could say I want to return. Uh, I want this to be of type and then we'll reference this post. Right. So all of these fields will be under a field named post. And then we expect something called votes, which is going to be set to an integer. So let's try this out and we'll go back to our post.py and I'm going to call, I'm going to reference post out. And we're going to return results again. And let's just make sure there's no errors. It looks like it's good. And let's see what happens now. All right, we got a little bit of an issue. And it looks like there's a title content title, content, a whole bunch of errors. And so the title and the content are missing for both. So what did we do wrong here? This should have fixed our issue. Well, let's try adding this uh, 
class config ORM. And I think that might actually be what's causing this problem. And now let's try this. Oh, that didn't look like it fixed it. All right, guys, so I was playing around with it and then I don't know what exactly fixed it, but all I did was uh, I had changed this to a lowercase p. And this led to, you know, us seeing this specific issue where it says, you know, hey, this post doesn't exist. And then as soon as I recapitalized it, all of a sudden it started to, to work again. It starts to work now. So I'm not really sure why it broke in the first place. I didn't change any other code. Uh, just looking back at my path operation, you can see that I'm now changing my response model to be schemas.postout. And then we're performing the same results query and then returning it. For some reason or another, it's now properly working. I have no idea what changed. I have no idea exactly what changed, but it's working now. So hopefully you guys don't run into any issues and hopefully it was just some kind of issue on my machine. But if you do run into the same issue, just try moving it to a lowercase try restarting the application then changing it back. I have no idea why that would fix it, but it seems to have done something. And so now our results are perfect. We get the post information. We still fetch the owner, which is fantastic. And then we have the votes. And then just double check to make sure that all of your votes uh, are all okay. Uh, and so it looks like they all look good. I know that one had two and then the rest should all have zero. So everything's looking pretty, pretty good. The next thing that we need to do is actually uh, go ahead and add our filters back in. So let's see if I can still filter on all of these. And so I'm just going to copy this. And then before I perform the, the dot all, I'm going to paste that in there. Oops, I forgot to. Uh, I forgot to copy. All right, and then let's test this out again. All right, things are still working, but let's just add a few extra uh, query parameters. So I'll say search equals beaches. All right, and then it looks like it should only return posts with the word beaches. And then let's try limit equals two. Remove the search for now. And that works too. So it looks like we get to keep all of the same functionality that we had before. So I'm going to just write this as posts. We're going to comment this out just for reference. And then we're going to return posts like we normally do. Send it one more time. And it looks like everything is still working just fine. Perfect.